The first stop of the tour, showing the island's west side, is a small fishing village. Sailors and fishermen have always been considered superstitious, faithful people, which is why they have their own chapels in a lot of ports. This is the case in Camara de Lobos, too. The walls of the chapel, Nossa Senhora de Canseí Saun, are decorated with paintings representing São Pedro, the patron saint of Portuguese sailors. The port of Camara de Lobos is one of the most colorful places of the island. The fishing boats painted in strong colors are extremely characteristic of the seacoasts of Portugal. Of all the places on the islands, you can see the largest number of them here. They not only dance on the water, many of them are pulled up to the sand and are painted and repaired there. Since the stormy wind often inhibits fishermen from taking to water, they while away their time with the maintenance of their riggings. They scratch at the barnacles, mend the nets, and repair their long rods. The most popular fish of Pandera Islands is the black swordfish, the espada. It's caught using especially long rods. The huge animal with its cylinder-like body lives in a depth of 2,000 meters, but at night, in expectation of prey, it comes up to 500 to 600 meters. Then they're hooked using squid bait. The fish, glittering in all the colors of the rainbow, succumbs to the bends before it ever reaches the surface. The low pressure does away with it. From this, also its color changes, and by the time it gets to the counter of the fish market, its body is a shining black. 3,000 tons of these tasty creatures are caught every year. The especially long swords are mounted and usually hung up on the walls of fish restaurants. In fact, a great deal of the fish is served right here, while the others are sold to cold storage plants and packing houses. The boats of the swordfish fishermen, the espaderos, are open and also their form differs from the ships of fishermen fishing with trawls. In the ports, the skins of squids and dogfish can often be seen hanging out to dry. The village of Sao Vicente, meaning St. Vincent, was given its name because the martyr's bones were preserved here, then taken to the Portuguese capital city. Since that time, St. Vincent has been the patron saint of Lisbon. For those who are interested in geology, a geological excursion has been established in a 70 meter long lava cave and the Botanical Garden is home to practically all the plants which can be found on the Madeira Islands. But the main site is the parish church from the 17th century. On the black and white mosaic pavement in front of the entrance, a sailboat and two ravens are visible. These are the saints' attributes. Of course, the frescoes of the ceiling are decorated with images from the saint's life. The high altar is a carved wooden altar richly covered with gold leaf, called Tauha Durada here. Picturesque cobblestone streets, pretty cottages, and small shops are characteristic of the settlement. Porto Moniz, a small wine grower village, was accessible almost only on foot until the middle of the 20th century. Excavation of the winding road into the rocks at the seaside began at that time. Although it's been widened and severed by a tunnel since then, it isn't without dangers even now with its narrow bypasses and waterfalls which give passing cars a shower. On top of that, more and more tourist buses come here, bringing passengers who've booked a one-day optional tour. Since the restaurants at this place are famous for their excellent fresh seafood, the price of the tour includes a several course meal and local wines. A lot of Portuguese families have a holiday home here, making it hard to find a table on the restaurant's terrace in the summer season. The 
Song Bath of Cordomonese is so particular that it shouldn't be missed. The designers imagined a huge shallow pool in the hollow of basalt rocks. It's certainly safer than swimming in the sea, but because of the waves sweeping into the pool, it isn't any less romantic. Sometimes swimmers are joined by some fish, quite by accident.